Welcome back everybody. Today we're finally going to be getting the front axle welded with its swap truss kit. Now I went with the TMR front truss swap kit for the JK when you're doing a one ton swap for the Ford Dana 60. Now a couple things when you get this truss online it tells you to cut off about two inches of cast over here and the reason why is because you have two little support pieces that come into this notch here and this notch over here but you're going to sit down here on the tube. So you need to trim this, you're going to have to cut down into it and then kind of hit it from the side which will then knock it loose and then kind of just clean it up. But basically your two inch point will line almost up with the truss itself up here. And then the next step that we need to do is over here I put some paint on it just to kind of keep it nice from flash rusting. So I'm going to have to clean that up, get it off so that way it's all prepped and ready for welding. Now once I got that all done. I'm going to load it up and head over to my buddy's shop where we're actually going to start the welding process there. And with that, we're going to go through the little steps you should take when putting this together. That way, it all comes out properly and you don't have any problems. Per se, like with the cast, you have to preheat it and postheat it. That way, your welds don't crack. But other than that, I'm going to get started on cleaning that up. Just get it all prepped and ready to go. That way, we can get over and get it welded. So what I'm doing now is putting the truss back on, that way I can look and see to make sure that all the areas that I cleaned up are where it needs to be cleaned so that when you go to weld they penetrate well and they hold up. So you can kind of see that in a couple of these little tiny corners I couldn't get it 100% but all the main truss itself going all the way down, it's cleaned up, the cast is cleaned up, that little corner I wasn't able to really get into up along the whole top it's clean down here I might try and get a little bit more but other than that it is 90% cleaned up touch it up a little bit more and then we'll get it loaded up and head out the one thing I recommend is if you do go to clean these up these carbide abrasion wheels you can get them at Harbor Freight the little focus polycarbide abrasive wheel they're a couple bucks and they're great because they will take the paint off of your axle without actually like digging in like the flap disc will. So you can get them cleaned up nice and good and get it ready to weld. So that's what we did and we'll get it loaded up and head out to get welded. So just a quick heads up everyone, there's going to be a little bit of um, switching back and forth between my buddy's shop where we got the axle welded and here and a little bit of voiceover just because I didn't realize everyone was going to be at my buddy's shop and the neighboring bays on a Saturday afternoon. So that's why there's going to be a little bit of voiceover and back and forth. but. Just want to let you know and we'll get right into it. The first thing we did when we got there is we got the axle unloaded, got it up on the table and started to get the truss fitted on there just to kind of see how everything played out so he could plan in his head how he wanted to weld everything and what, where he wanted to start. So that's basically what we did when we first got there and we'll just get right into it and start welding. So the first thing that we did is we got the truss mocked up onto the axle where we knew we were going to put it and then we started tack welding it in multiple places that way 
when we took it off it was a solid piece and it wasn't going to be moving around anymore. The next thing is we started to weld the tubes to the cast. The reason I did this is because I didn't want a chance for them to twist later when wheeling. Um, but the thing that Raven did is he tacked up four spots that way he could evenly go around the axle, do one quarter of it, go to the opposite side, do that quarter of it, and then moved over to the next tube, did the same thing, four tacks, a quarter of it, go to the opposite half, do another quarter, and then switch back to the other side and finish it off. So because of welding the tubes to the cast, we realized that you're going to have two little points that don't let the truss sit down all the way. Right here next to where the TMR logo is, you got to grind away just a little bit. And then also with the support bracket on this side, it is going to hit those welds. So what I ended up having to do is kind of grind away just a little bit of the edge, kind of round it off just a little bit so that it would sit down on those welds just a little bit better. And once we did that, we started getting the support pieces in place and just tacking them up. That way we could go ahead and start welding everything together. And the next step that Raven did is he just started going along and stitch welding where his tacks are from one point to another. We didn't go along the entire truss itself and weld the whole thing. We just did stitch welds periodically. And also to distribute heat, he didn't go completely all the way along across the truss. He would go kind of back and forth from either side in different spots. That way there was less chance of warping and also to just get, distribute the heat nicely. So as you're going to see in this next part of the video, what we did is we took a plasma cutter and cut a hole into the top of the axle truss. And the reason for that is because I wanted to use the factory breather location, which comes right out of the top of the axle here. Now TMR, they have an accordion little breather that gets tapped into the diff cover. And personally, I just didn't want to do that. So that's why we went ahead and cut a hole in here to use the factory breather location. But that's not going to affect anything structural wise just because of how thick and sturdy this swap truss is so that's the next step we took in getting this thing put on So after we got the hole cut into the top of the truss so for the breather, we got the axle truss set down on the axle and started going ahead and tacking it down into place. That way we could start going ahead and actually getting it welded to the axle itself. So after getting it tacked on in most places, the next thing that Raven wanted to do was go ahead and tackle the cast part. And you want to make sure you do a preheat and postheat treatment, that way your welds don't crack. We took the oxyacetylene torch and went ahead and heated it up nice and evenly all the way across. That way when you go to do your welds, you don't have any issues, but you want to make sure that you do it before and after. You want to cool it down at a very steady rate. You don't want it to just cool super quick because you have the chance of a well cracking. So after we got it heated up, Raven went ahead and started doing the stitch welds in the certain spots that he felt were the most necessary. 
and then once we were done with that we did our post heat treatment which took a little time but it was worth it because none of our welds cracked and everything held nicely. So after we got the cast all welded and preheated and postheated, rigging started going along the truss itself and getting everything welded to the axle and just getting everything ready to go and be done. Then the next thing we did, we started working on the mounts. First thing we did was the shock mounts for either side. And those consist of the four pieces. One, you're gonna have one notch per side and one smooth spot on your two plates on the side and then you get your two plates for where the shock's gonna mount to, one big, one small, piece it all together and we just started going along, tacking it up and then once we got it all tacked up into place, we went ahead and welded it all together. Once we got them all welded together, we slid them into place onto the axle and the truss where the key into place, got it tacked up and then got it welded on. The next part that we wanted to tackle was the lower control arm mounts and with these you have your one angle piece which is your skid and you're going to have two side pieces and one's going to have a slight bend to it and one's going to be straight that way you can see on the actual front skid plate part where they match up. Once we got them all pieced together we got them tacked up, got them welded and then we set them off to the side so that they could cool before we put them onto the axle itself. So after letting the control arm brackets cool for a couple of minutes, we went ahead and mocked up the passenger side bracket, got it tacked up in place where we wanted it, then went ahead and welded it to the axle itself. After we got it all welded, we went ahead and measured it to see exactly where it was. That way when we went to the driver's side, we could mock it up into the exact same place. That way when we go to actually bolt up the axle under the Jeep, everything lines up nicely and we don't have any issues. So the next part Raven wanted to tackle was the spring buckets and they're super simple. Your top plate has two little notches on either side, it sits right down into the round part of the bucket. And the way he tackled these was the exact same way he did the tubes. Did four tacks roughly evenly all the way around, then went ahead and did a weld from one tack to another, moved over to the opposite half, did another weld from one tack to another, moved over to the other spring bucket, did the exact same until he got them completely done, then we let them go ahead and cool off that way we made sure there's no warping or anything once those were cooled off piece them right into the top of the truss there's three notches on the bottom and there's three holes in the top of the truss making it super simple to lay in place he went ahead got them tacked up and then went around the whole edge and welded them to the truss itself So the next thing we had to deal with was the tower where the Johnny joints are going to go and the one side was a little bit harder than the other, well they both kind of had their difficulties. But with the tall side it was just awkward trying to get it to lay down on our table nicely so that we could get the actual joint housing centered in properly so we could tack it into place. This side was just a little bit harder welding it onto the actual truss itself just because of how low it sits. So it didn't get a full weld through, but that's not a problem because even with basically these welds just going around the three sides, it's still going to be strong and hold in place perfectly fine. But that's the big thing is just you want to make sure you get these roughly as centered and even as possible.
So the next part we wanted to tackle was the track bar mount. And with this, I suggest you get your, if you have an extra joint laying around or you're able to take your track bar out and put it into place, bolt it up. That way you can get it exactly where it needs to be. If you can't do that, just do what I did and measure and go ahead and just measure how wide it needs to be. Get it into place, tack it up and double check your measurements that way you don't run into any issues but that's what we did because the first time we tacked it up we tacked it up a little bit too close because I didn't think about measuring it right away so then we just broke it off real quick cleaned it up and then measured it got it tacked got it welded so now that when I go to mount this under the Jeep I won't have a problem over here and then same thing with your lower control arms just if you can bolt them up in the place before you tack them that way that you don't have any problems when you go to mount it under the jeep later the shock mounts you shouldn't have to worry about that just because of the way they key together there's not really much adjustment you can do for them but with the track bar and the lower control arms if you can great if not just do what i did and measure your joints that way when you go to put it in place you don't have any problems When you go to mount the track bar onto the axle, it's going to sit right up against the axle tube itself. There's a little notch in the back side of the track bar mount that slides right onto the top plate of the truss. And then you go ahead, make sure that it's sitting nice and flush everywhere, tack it into place, and then go ahead and weld it. So that is basically going to be it on this video of welding the front truss to the axle. Huge shout out to Raven over at Caveman Customs for spending a Saturday working on this project, doing an awesome job and just knocking it out of the park. His welds look great. Everything is held into place. Nothing is going to go anywhere down the road. He did a fantastic job. Also, shout out to TMR for just making a great product. I mean, this truss is thick. It's strong. It's beefy. It's not going to go anywhere it's going to hold up to any sorts of wheeling down the road but also they did a great job of making this a uh, pretty much simple and straightforward process all the brackets key into each other that way you can weld them up nice and quick and then they key into the truss and axle super simply just making an easy process that way you can take everything put it up there weld it and then you're good to go but that is going to basically be it for this video Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.